look at things. Don't jump forward when somebody just comes around uh, handing out uh, little objects and whatnot and say, now, what you people need, uh, you dark people, all of you black people, you all don't have anything to do. So I got something for you to do because I'm the thinker. I always think of things for you to do because you don't have any plans for yourself. That's the white supremacist mentality. So what I want all you black people to do this week or for the next three or four years, uh, since you all are not doing anything, just kind of sitting around looking up at the sky and whatnot and looking at each other and then get mad when you look and start hitting each other and whatnot, I'll give you something different to do just to keep you amused and keep me amused. And uh, so I got some things here in a box, so I'm handing it all out to you. And so the black people sit there and say, well, what, what are you handing out? What, 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 what do you got for me now? You know, so we just take it. Just take it out. I'll, I'll explain it to you after you take it. And so then we pick it all up. Then he says, now, ladies and gentlemen, see, they'll be real polite when they're getting ready to run a game on you. Okay. So they'll say, what these are, these are tools for tattooing. Do you all understand tattooing? Yes. And we say, yes. Yeah, we know what tattoos are. Well, your skin needs to be improved. You black people need to improve your skin. Because people are always talking against your color and your skin. So what you need is some decorations on your skin. Now, what they're not telling us, that this is old stuff. Because they decorated us, our skin, when they first grabbed us. Right. Because one of the first things they did was take that tattoo iron, called a branding mm -hmm. iron, just mm -hmm. like you would a cow, and they put their brand on us. And they're still doing it, and we're paying for it. And they're laughing right. at us and like always looking for a reason to celebrate. We don't have a reason to celebrate. We never did have, ever since we came under the government of white supremacy. Slaves and prisoners of war don't have room for celebration. We make three or four baby steps, and it's celebration time. We need to get that, that notion out of our head, because then, after the celebration, we get insulted, and then we got to, you know, lick our wounds and whatnot for 40 days and 40 nights, you know, and then until we can get another breath and hope that we don't get insulted again. And I want to say something about that thing about respect. Stop asking for it, ever. Stop asking for it. Why? For a very logical reason. Respect is something that you give yourself. You never look for another person to give you respect because whoever can give you respect can take it away from you. So what is self-respect? What I've written in my book years ago, self-respect is refusing to lie to yourself like we do often about racism. Once you start lying to yourself, you're through booking. Once we start start saying, well, I feel so bad about racism, I don't even want to deal with it anymore. So I'm just going to blank it out of my mind. Well, you can blank it out of your mind all you want to. But it's still a reality, and it's still the thing that's going to dictate how you exist on this planet. Every time you take a breath, you're going to breathe it in and breathe it out, because that's all that you're in. You're not in someplace else. Sometimes we as black people collectively, we think that we have, the, have a breathing space. There's no breathing space on a slave ship. You're still on the slave ship. I don't care where you in the forecastle or the captain's cabin. Sometimes we do, you know, take a little sojourn to the captain's cabin, and it's nice and plush up there and all like that, but you're still a slave in the captain's cabin of a slave ship. It's a slave ship, the entire planet. doesn't make any difference where you go. There's no place to run, no place to hide. You have to turn the entire ship into a ship of quality relations between people. I call it the ultimate voyage, where people become just people. Is this type of activity an improvement, and if so, why? Otherwise, why are you coming around asking black people who don't even have a roof over their head that this is what they should be pushing now?
They don't even have a decent school or a decent job. But now you want them to get, join the gay rights movement, and that mm -hmm. should be their priority. We should drop everything else and make that a priority. I don't yes, see sir. the justification at all. Mm -hmm. They have some uh, white people who came around years ago and started saying, calling it the rainbow, you know, kind of, uh, you might excuse the pun, tailgating Jesse Jackson's rainbow push for civil rights. And then they got to saying, well, what is this all about? And when the question was asked, they answered by saying, well, it's another division of civil rights. Yeah. Yeah. It's all the same thing. Discriminating against gays is the same as discriminating against blacks. And a lot of black people say, wait a minute, it may sound like the same thing, but it ain't the same thing. But they were able to shout all of that down. It is the same thing. Why is it the same thing? Because I said so. <laughs> White supremacy in action again. Always because I said so. See, but, you know, but that, that don't, you know, it sounds like it could be right, but it, it's something that don't, still don't add up. It ain't the same thing. It is the same thing. Trust me. No different. Discrimination is discrimination, which is another word that people should pay attention to. Everybody discriminates every day. You discriminate when you uh, uh, decide to ride the bicycle to work rather than catch the bus. And does that say that you are discriminating against the bus riders? You know, so that word discrimination, I don't even use it because everybody discriminates. It just means choosing. So if you just, all we really have to do is just say, hey, who's behind all of this stuff that's going on? We see what's going on on the surface, and we are, we are you know, chomping at the bit to jump on the black women who are out here, I mean, shaking and doing this and selling themselves and all like that. But wait a minute. They weren't born doing this. So who's really behind this? Hmm. And I'm always saying, anything that seems like it may be non-constructive that you see black people doing, immediately go to the usual suspects. That's what we do, and that's what I do. I say, wait a minute, this looks like something that the usual suspects has come up with. Almost anything that I see black people are doing has got a question mark on it. It doesn't even have to be something destructive. Hmm. But if it looks like it might be leading to something destructive, I always say, hey, let's check this out and see what the white supremacists have to do with this. Or if there are some white supremacists that have to do with it. Because the assumption should always be that anything that you see black people doing that may have a question mark behind it, always suspect that it's a plot by the white supremacists and be willing to say so to the whole world. Hmm. Always say, you know, and the term that you actually use, use exact terms, say, the usual suspects, just like in the movie Casablanca. Say, hey, this looks like something concocted by the usual suspects. But they'll say, what are you talking about, fella? Mm -hmm. Who are the usual suspects? The white supremacists. It looks like another one of their schemes. Oh, yeah, but you don't have any proof of that. And all I, I, I'm saying I suspect it. I don't have the proof, no. But I suspect it because it could be something destructive. Yeah, but it hasn't proven to be destructive so far. Yeah, so far, but I don't know what's going to happen when we turn around the corner. You know, the usual suspects always throw out some bait, just like catching a fish. Mm -hmm. They always throw black people something that looks like it's good on the surface. Right. And then 50 years later, it turns out to be totally something that's totally poisonous. Mm-hmm. And now we're 50 years behind wrestling with that poison. Anytime they come down the pike, you should have one thing in mind. We're talking about what to do about things now. When I see them coming, this is a part of the code. When you see people coming, I'm not talking about all white people, but when you see white people approaching you with anything, any kind of new fad, anything, any kind of something that's going to help you, always have in your mind, here they come. What are they up to now? That should be on every black person's lips on the entire planet. Here they come again. <laughs> what are they up to now? That should be your mindset. Right.
Now, you'll have white people who say, oh, that's a terrible attitude to have. Mm. No, it isn't. <laughs> because if you're coming there to do something that's going to be constructive, we should be the first after it's proven to be constructive, after we have run it through every type of test, and we have seen, hey, this is really constructive. Mm -hmm. Hey, we should be the first to stand up and say, hey, we have to, we, we were suspicious of you, but that suspicion is gone because you have proven yourself to come with a constructive intent.